about coasts are likely to cover one or more of four different areas. Processes, the physical actions that create features. Landforms, the natural features that you can see at the coast. Management of coasts and specific case study detail. In this podcast, I will be covering processes and landforms. And in the second, I will cover management methods. However, throughout both, I will be referring specifically to the case study of the Jurassic coastline in South Dorset, in order to add depth to any information you may use in your exam answers. However, don't forget that there are numerous other case studies that you will have learnt about and an examiner is always impressed by a selection of examples to illustrate your breadth of knowledge too. So don't just use this podcast for your revision, do make active use of your own notes, textbooks, revision guides and other web-based resources to help your revision. The three processes found acting at the coast are erosion, the wearing away and removal of rock, transportation, the movement of sediment, and deposition, the dumping of sediment. For a top level answer, you should be able to refer to different types of erosion, hydraulic action, abrasion or corrosion, corrosion, and attrition. Make sure you can define each type of erosion. Equally, there are four ways that beach sediment can be transported, traction, saltation, suspension and solution. You should be familiar with these terms from your river studies. Do learn concise definition for types of transportation and try to refer to the most appropriate types to add extra detail to your answers. At the coast, sediment is transported via the process of longshore drift and you should be able to refer to keywords such as the prevailing wind direction, and swash and backwash. The final process is deposition. No types of deposition here, so that's an easy one. Sediment is simply deposited when the sea loses the required energy to carry it any further. Landforms are natural features found at the coast. You may need to describe these. Don't forget, examiners absolutely love it when students include clear, annotated diagrams within their answer. So do practice drawing simple sketches of different landforms. Include these to support your answer, even if there isn't a specific diagram box provided. Trust me, it will be worth it. However, it is also likely that you will be required to explain how certain landforms are formed. And so you will need to link your knowledge of features with your knowledge of different processes. The Jurassic coastline in South Dorset is an ideal case study to learn because it contains so many examples of different types of landform. We will now take a look at some of these. Erosional landforms include bays and headlands and all the associated features found on a headland such as cracks, caves, arches, stacks and stumps together with wave cut notches and platforms. Lulworth Cove is an excellent example of a bay which has been eroded out of a concordant coastline. A concordant coastline is one with bands of different type of rock running parallel to the coastline. Put simply, the sea has eroded away the less resistant rock to form a C-shaped incision or bay in the coastline and left sections of more resistant rock to form prongs or headlands either side of the bay and also a more resistant back to the bay. To really impress the examiner, it would be great to quote that in Lulworth Cove's case, the less resistant rock is soft sedimentary green sand and wielding clay, which has been eroded away to form the bay and the remaining rock is the harder chalk Purbeck limestone and Portland stone, which has proved more resistant to erosion and forms the back of the bay and the headlands. Nevertheless, these headlands are now at the front line of attack from the power of the waves and are themselves being slowly eroded. Old Harry's rocks 
and Durdle Door are world famous examples of stacks and stumps and arches. Formed as the sea exerts its hydraulic action on the rock and faults and cracks are blasted apart by the power of the water and the abrasional power of sediment being constantly hurled at the headland. If you look at the top of the arch, which currently forms Durdle Door, it is easy to see where the next rock collapse may occur as a result of erosion, so leaving a new stack on the landscape. Lulworth Cove, Old Harry Rocks and Durdle Door are all major natural tourist attractions, which help to generate thousands of pounds of revenue from calf parking fees, cafes, restaurants and gift shops. However, conflict can occur at these honeypot sites because the needs of the locals have to be balanced with the demands from tourists. Health and safety issues have to be considered and ensuring that footpaths are not eroded too quickly and reducing congestion on small local roads are issues regularly discussed by a range of stakeholders. Don't forget that alongside erosional landforms, the Dorset coastline has its fair share of depositional landforms too. Easily forgotten are the beaches, such as those at Sandbanks, Poole, Bournemouth and Muddiford. The other depositional landforms are the spits, such as Hengisbury Head and the spit and tombolo of Chesil Beach and the Isle of Portland. Don't forget that top tip of being able to draw a clear and well annotated sketch to help describe these features and explain how they are formed. Beaches are usually formed on gently sloping gradients, sometimes with sand dunes behind them and forming the transitional zone between shoreline and further inland. Beach material can either be larger sediments such as cobbles, pebbles and shingle or finer, more eroded particles such as sand. It is sometimes possible to identify a storm pebble beach higher up the beach, running parallel to the shoreline, which indicates storm high tide lines. Remember, it is likely that beach material becomes smaller and smoother as a result of attrition, the particles knocking against each other as they are transported by the sea. Beaches are important landforms for three reasons. Environmentally, they create diverse habitats for coastal flora and fauna and act as a natural flood and erosional buffer zone for further inland because the sea has to expend its energy travelling up the beach. Socially, they provide recreational facilities and economically, they create money-making opportunities. The spit at Mudderford Spit, east of Hengisbury Head, is a good example of a depositional landform which has created a long, flat beach popular with tourists and the salt marshes that have formed behind it have created an effective natural defence from inland flooding and erosion. You will find it much easier to draw a simple sketch of Hengisbury Head and Mudderford Spit to show the direction of the prevailing wind, the zigzag pattern of the swash and backwash as it transports sediment via longshore drift, and then the change in direction of coastline towards the River Stour, which causes the waves to slow as they refract around the coastline and so lose energy, which forces them to deposit their load. This forms the long, flat, narrow spit whose hooked ends are created when there is a short-term change in prevailing wind direction.